So, Gergely, man, it's great to finally meet in person. We worked together for a while through Visco, but it's really nice to meet you in person. Absolutely, yeah, it's super nice to meet you, Berg. You, you basically taught me car design, and uh, yeah, now meeting you on behalf of Visco, it's uh, it's a special thing. Oh, that's amazing! And see your progress. I remember when you wanted to study car design, and now where you are, it's it's absolutely amazing. Now I'm learning from you about <laughs> how to use Visco. So please tell me about yourself a little bit. Who are you? Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Hi everybody. I'm Gergely Mihai. Um, I actually studied uh, industrial design as well, and uh, it was more of an engineering-related industrial design course in Hungary. So it's not a famous uh, design university, and uh, that gave me quite a bit of insight into like technology, engineering mm. side of things as well. And then I sort of just put the the design and artistic side next to it. So basically, after school, I tried to keep up with the trends, tried to sketch every day for multiple years uh, to get my skills there. And eventually, yeah, I, um, I after university, I also worked at uh, smaller studios in Hungary that uh, gave me like real life uh, design experience on uh, on various vehicles. But then, pretty uh, pretty soon after that, I I joined Viscom as one of the earliest members, and uh, basically, there we go. I uh, I wore a lot of hats in the company. I did a lot of things. It's uh, it's a super diverse experience and. Uh, and it's an extreme journey that we've been through with the with the company. And uh, now I'm a product expert interfacing with uh, all of these OEMs, uh, design teams on uh, how to integrate new technologies and how to shape the future of design, essentially. Wow, that's a great summary. You say product expert, but I know you are like one of the first employees, as you mentioned, and uh, you also have client experiences, client relationships. Like we are at the car design met right now in Munich. It's an awesome experience. And uh, you did a very good presentation sum summarizing the Viscom. And what are your thoughts about the impressions of professional designers and companies about Viscom? Because many people saw it for the first time. And what do you think they feel? Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And these events are, um, are super interesting from, from that regard because we, we got to meet the industry professionals. Uh, we can like spectate them real life because usually I do presentations and demos online mostly. And it's uh, always such a great experience to to be on site, be in, per be in the same room with people, so you can get the feedback and everything. And it's super super valuable. The overall feedback is uh, is extremely positive, which is uh, which is such a such a nice thing to to experience. To be honest, like designers uh, come up to me and say, "Oh yeah, I, uh, I use Viscom on the side, even if my uh, studio wouldn't allow uh, for the moment." And uh, they just came to us with. Um, with a lot of uh, love and uh, a lot of uh, passion about the tool as well. So overall, hugely positive experience so far. Yeah, that's actually, you point a very good point. Do you point a very good point? Um, I also realized many people want to use it, love this phone, but they say, yeah, they cannot use it in the studio right now. Why is that and what is the solution? Okay, yeah, no, that's a, that's a brief topic. Um, yeah, so from the get-go, we designed Viscom with the enterprise security in mind since Jordan Taylor, the CEO, was uh, working at an OEM and he, he understands it really well that, uh, that we had to be from the get-go enterprise ready from security uh, point of view. And we are, uh, we are compliant, uh, we are enterprise ready from that regard. And uh, that proves that we have a lot of customers in the US, OEMs in the US, like Ford, uh, that is referenceable. We have um, customers in Japan, for example. But um, we started noticing this, um, this happening that in Germany, it just uh, takes a bit more time to get through security. And sometimes the process takes so much time, so many steps in, let's say, in the bureaucracy of things, that uh, sometimes the project gets lost. And even though designers wants to use it, they um, it's just difficult to push it through the entire organization and that's when it can slow down. Oh, totally. I also get this feedback a lot from people whenever I have conversation because everybody has an interest to generally AI. And what I also realized is that many people still have the information about AI from two years ago or even last year, which misguide them and misinformed them, I believe. So what would you say about Viscom AI for car design process to somebody who is here for the first time, let's say? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I would just say that um, first and foremost, 
most uh, most of the team is uh, out of uh, industrial designers so we we understand the the core of the process and then we try to create tools that um, that we think it's useful in our workflow and then we basically make publicly available tools which is uh, viscom and then um, we put it in front of the industry we get the positive or negative feedback as well we try to uh, implement it but essentially the core is that uh, it comes from the deep understanding and research of the process itself and that's why we can we can have good answers and we can build uh, quite compelling tools for designers because um, we just like deeply understand the process i think that's a great advantage because if you are just focusing on technology and how to adjust it for designers it would be more trouble like i like the layers i mean if you know my channel if you follow me for a while you know that i'm a brand that was at this as well but he's the product that's an expert so he knows more things than me uh, but i love as a designer the layers the studio the the workbench everything really designed for designers i love that aspect of this mm -hmm. so i'm wondering your thoughts about the future of Viscom, not like officially, I'm not expecting it officially, oh, this is coming next week and so on, but where do you think it might go in next year, five years? I don't know. Yeah, no, that's that's super hard to answer in detail because uh, technology moves uh, so fast, like basically every other month a uh, new paper research comes out and we can start about, okay, how to implement these like new papers technologies in into the entire workflow. But on a high level, our vision is definitely to essentially cover the entire paper to production pipeline. And we just want to channel in the technologies that will allow us to do this. And in the meantime, we also have to be sure that we implement it with the current workflows. But we have a, a really ambitious plan of uh, if you want to make something, you just go to Wiscom and you can do it there, like everything in one platform, which is quite novel. But um, at the moment, I would say the like a mid like a midterm future of the tool would be that now we can say that viscom actually some of the industry professionals also said that viscom is like an intern we have to hold its hand it can create some nice results but it needs a lot of guidance and the next step will be that um, viscom will mature into a colleague which is more like a, a let's say a full-time person that you can just uh, interact with and it will be capable of handling more tasks, more, more complex tasks in the, in the near future. Uh, actually, I would relate to that. Um, I really know how to put it in English, like as Viscom as a her or him, because it's not like a colleague to me. Yeah. Like, as a freelancer, <laughs> I'm alone and I work with Viscom and I feel like it supports me in a very yeah. similar level sometimes. It's, it's really cool. Uh, if we come back to today's world again, I'm a little bit curious on your opinion because I'm a also Blender uh, educator, let's say, Blender trainer, and I saw on your presentation the new upcoming 3D related stuff. I will not give details because it's not public yet, but do you think Wiscom will take over <laughs> 3D, like the sketch 3D part and we will not use Blender? Should I be afraid of that? Oh yeah, we are just uh, yet to comprehend what uh what the new features will bring or this more detailed 3D that we are about to release pretty soon is actually going to bring to the process. But at the moment, it seems like if we have a tight sketch, tight rendering, we can get we can get a 3D model that uh, tremendously respects the rendering in every detail and uh, it will cut down the time significantly. The question will be is that how we can actually feed that into the process in terms of um, we have to have the quad meshes, we have to make it editable. That's definitely will be one thing that we have to tackle if you really want to integrate into the uh, sketch modeling workflow. But yes, I definitely imagine because of the time save, you would be able to create multiple of these 3D models in, in basically minutes, which is going to be remarkable when it comes to design reviews. You can, you can just go there, you can also use the augmented reality formats, put it in the room and, and present. Uh, another tiny challenge will be uh, the textures and part separation of the models, but uh, don't want to go into that that much of a detail here. Mm. Yeah. Good, so still we need Blender for a while. Good. Yes. <laughs> uh, this was my question, but I get questions sometimes of the comments of my videos about Viscom, uh, generally from students. For example, from the free accounts, 
do you have access to all the features of this com? Can I just log in with a random account now and use it? Yes, you can. So we offer a free version. Uh, here I would also like to mention that if you're a student, we have an education plan and uh, the edu plan covers the professional package and that's free for students if you, you can apply through the interface. Okay. And as I remember, the email, the email address should be like the name or whatever, that's edu, right? Is it a mandatory thing? Or if I have dot com, can I somehow apply proving that I'm a student? Currently, the interface will only allow you if you have a uh, proper EDU address, but uh, you can anytime reach out to us and, and we can make it work. So no, no problem on that front. And a little bit of a tricky question now, more from professional designers, sometimes I get asked like, is it totally safe, 100%? For example, let's say I work in a brand and at home I want to do something related to work. Can I use MISCOM? And I will be sure that this data will be totally safe. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's why we have these um, enterprise security compliances uh, in place, because uh, it's a completely locked down solution on the cloud. Uh, nothing is going to get out. Uh, we have uh, super like secure workspla uh, workspaces. So uh, yeah, nothing, nothing will get out. Oof, that's good. So you will not steal my <laughs> designs and <laughs> yeah. sell them online. OK, that's cool. Next thing, the last thing for this video uh, that I want to ask is any advice for young studios, up, uh, young students, upcoming designers? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, that's uh, okay. So, yeah, my my general advice would be that um, it's still really essential to, to master the craft of design because we have to understand sketch proportion details. We have to be able to also edit the renderings and it's, it actually will not really matter what tools we use, but the fundamental things that uh, proportion surface uh, perspective and this, uh, basically the good taste will develop as you start using tools in depth and you start making forms. And this is a brief skill that can be captured by uh, hand sketching. It can be captured by 3D modeling, sculpting, or even using Viscom. So the tools will, let, uh, will matter a bit less, but if you focus on the essential things, uh, that's, uh, that's definitely still will be some of the core parts um, in, in, the, in the entire journey of a car designer. So yeah, focus, focus on the high level skills and also uh, but get the basics, which are which are super useful, and be open to new technologies. Be a lookout for for new technologies because it will um, um, it will come down to if you can adapt to new tools very quickly. I think that's a great advice, and I know that this is advice that you, I'll say, put it together by talking with a lot of professional designers from industry, not only car design, also different um, different fields. And I know that you're always in contact, so I know that this advice matters because I hear similar ones from professional design, so it's a really good one. Maybe one addition that came to mind is that um, I heard some good stories from, uh, from professors here that uh, students actually have the advantage over some industry professionals because uh, they, they have a bit more time experimenting with the projects. Projects are also a bit more experimental during university, so take advantage of that. and. Uh, because if you because if you have time experimenting with new tools you can essentially also sort of overtake the industry professionals in a sense because you get that advantage that you could really explore a new solution that can just give you a tremendous advantage over others that's very true actually because companies are busy professionals are busy so the students who are going for internships or starting their career can actually train the companies and Companies are also looking for this a little bit, even on portfolios, I guess, like, oh, this guy or this girl knows how to use AI so we can take advantage of it. It's absolutely fine. Yeah. One thing I want to ask that I also got asked two, three times during the event, when we will have a better rings and wheels on the Wisco model? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's definitely a problematic part right now. Uh, I imagine we'll have to do a dedicated model for it or some sort of like dedicated solution. Uh, so yeah, I'll I'll get back to the team and we'll we'll start probably cooking up. Uh, we'll, we'll probably start cooking up something there. Perfect. Sounds great. Awesome. Okay. It was a pleasure. 
having conversation with you in front of the camera. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, and, my uh, pleasure. If you are like, maybe his sound, uh, his voice sounds familiar because he's also doing videos for this cop's official channel, so you could check it out. If you are not aware yet for the tutorials and get familiar with this comp. And if you have any questions about this topic, write down in the comments because I'm in constant contact with Gergay and I can always ask and come back to channel uh, for the next time. Thank you very much. Of course, totally. Thanks.